The Bears are who we thought they were. They are who we thought they were. I mean, this entire season, throughout all the games that we've been winning, we thought that this team was an extremely dominant team on the defensive side of the football, that when it had some level of success on the offensive side of the football, it becomes completely unstoppable. And the Bears, they are who we thought they were. They are that team. You know, this entire week, Bears fans have been wondering, like, what if the old Bears come back in this game against the Lions? You know, we've not been having any success against the Lions. We've not beaten any divisional opponents. Is the curse still going to continue? Would the Bears still lose to the Lions, even though we had the much better team, much better coaching staff? No, the Bears are finally who we thought they were. And there's no mistake now on what the identity of this football team is. It's a team that thrives on its defense and can also rely on its offense to supplement, you know, the amazing plays they get on defense. And this is the first time I've been able to say that in my time as being a Bears fan. Either we have had, you know, an okay offense and a trash defense, or we've had only an amazing defense and no offense. When have we had both at the same time? I can't even remember a time. And, you know, I've only been watching the Bears since, like, 2005, 2006 when I was young. But even for you guys that are older, you know, that watched the Bears in 1985 and, and you know, before that, still, like, you did not see a time where the Bears' offense and defense was dominant at the same time. And right now, it's looking like we're headed that way for a long time to come. So in this video, I'm going to give a quick reaction to the game against the Lions. And, you know, guys, it was... You know, I predicted, if you watch my prediction video, I predicted the score to be way closer than it actually was. Because even I, a diehard Bears fan, did not think that <laughs> this team would be that dominant. But, man, we just straight dominated the Lions. And you can say that, you know, it was closer at the end. We only won by, what was the final score? I think we won by, like, 11 points. Um, so it seemed closer than it actually was. But this game was never in doubt. Like... Even when Cody Parkey missed all those field goals, I still knew that there was no way the Lions would come back and beat us because we were just beating them at all aspects of the game. Our coaching was better, our offense was playing better, our defense was playing better. Obviously our special teams were not playing as good, but you know it, it doesn't really matter when you're so dominant on the other two phases of football. And we just you know beat the shit out of a div divisional opponent that we have not been able to beat at all and just just realize that like this is our first divisional win in two years so enjoy this moment you know we've earned it as bears fans and you know to be honest this season like we've had we've been having so many highlights and so many good plays that I, I don't even get like before i used to get so excited for just one 20 yard pass or like one touchdown or one one interception but now we have so many of those plays that you know, every game is just so fun to watch from beginning to end. Um, so yeah, let's let's analyze some of the stats of this game. So the Lions, they beat us in first downs, but who cares about that? You know, they beat us 24 to 20 in first downs. Uh, total, but that's because they had 20 more total plays than us. Because, you know, we, we were scoring very fast. And, you know, our running game did not go, get going in this game. So that's kind of the reason why, you know, the Lions still had a chance to hang in there a little bit at the end. Um, let's see, yards per play, we had 7.6, they had 4.2. We outgained them in passing yards, 348 to 229. Thoroughly dominated that. They outrushed us this game, which that was surprising to me because we had the best rushing defense and they had the worst, one of the worst rushing defenses. The most important part of the game, turnovers. They committed three tur turnovers, we committed zero turnovers. And that, that's the story of the game right there. I mean... It's complete momentum changing when you force a turnover in like critical spots like we did. So, yeah, those are the stats. And, you know, guys, it was overall just a very dominant team win. Um, let's talk a little bit about each phase of the game. Uh, offense, defense, and special teams. Offense was just absolutely brilliant in this game. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah, the Lions were missing um, Darius Slay. They were missing some people on defense. And they, they did not have the best defense, apparently. Um, but... Still, the what we were able to do, and hats off to Mitch Trubisky, man. Mitch Trubisky right now, he looks like he's definitely going to be our franchise quarterback. I know it's early, but man, the stuff that he does, week in, week out. I know sometimes he struggles with his accuracy, but 
sometimes he also has games like this where he just absolutely goes off and just dominates. Mitch Trubisky had 355 yards passing. He had three touchdowns, no interceptions. He had a touchdown on the ground as well. So four total touchdowns. And he helped me win my fantasy game this week. So I was happy about that. And you know, Mitch, he is going places this year. Like every single week, I feel like he's getting better and better. You know, sometimes he has a little bit of a down game. But like I said earlier, just ride it out with Mitch. And you're going to get games like this where he absolutely dominates. And it's so nice to see, you know, as a Bears fan, a quarterback that is actually capable of winning us games. The play calling on offense was amazing as well. I mean, we had so many wide open players. And, you know, Trubisky, he had to make... I think, again, Trubisky had a better game in this game than the Buccaneers game. Because the Buccaneers game, he was just throwing to wide open receivers. But in this game, you know, he actually had to make some really amazing throws. Like that throw to Ben Broniker in the first quarter and then that deep shoulder fade to A-Rob in the end zone. I mean, those are really hard throws to make and people don't realize how hard it is. So he made some amazing throws, but our offense in general just played absolutely outstanding, um, except for rushing. I mean, we did not get the run game going again. And that's a little bit worrying because, you know, our run blocking was not where it needed to be. And, you know, but it's okay because we won this game by a lot, but I feel like later on we're, we're going to need to find a way to establish the run game. So that was the only negative parts about the offense and the defense. I mean, as usual, it was absolutely outstanding. Six sacks on Matt Stafford. He was not able to do anything. We shut down Kerry and Johnson, not completely, but he did not. I think he only had like 72 yards or something. So, and like I said in my prediction, you know, if we shut down the run game, it would be very hard for them to get anything going on offense. So. We did that well. Uh, we forced three turnovers. You know, this team is absolutely amazing at forcing turnovers. So that was very good. You know, one thing I want to comment on is, you know, Bryce Callahan. The, right now, we have to make it an absolute priority to re-sign him in this offseason because he's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. And he seems like one of the most important pieces of our defense right now because I he's one of the best slot corners in the entire NFL. You know, you look at PFF, you look at other rankings, like, he is absolutely dominant somehow. And I'm very happy for him. Bryce Callahan is turning out to be a very good football player. And, yeah, the rest of our defense played amazing as usual. I mean, this is a defense that looks like it has multiple pro bowlers on it. And you cannot, you cannot say that for a long time. So, happy about that. And finally, let's go to special teams. This was the only bad part of the day. I mean, Cody Parkey, we kind of have a kicking problem on our hands. I'm not going to say like we have to cut Cody Parkey right now or, or bring in a new kicker because ultimately, you know, Cody Parkey is still signed for long term and we still have a $5 million cap hit for next year, which, you know, that, that's a very big cap hit to just absorb, you know, if you're going to cut Cody Parkey. I feel like mentally he's just not where he needs to be because you know, he just, you could kind of tell by his body language, especially after he missed that second field goal. You know, he was not mentally ready, and that's why he missed all those field goals. And that sucks, because if it was a closer game, he could have definitely cost us that game. And later on in the playoffs, if we make it there, which we probably will, and just later on in the season, you know, you we're going to be playing in some close games, and we need every single point that we can get. So, Cody Parkey, you have to be better. Um... You know, do whatever you have to do. Special teams coach, you know, work with him, figure out what's wrong, get him mentally right again. And hopefully, you know, this kicking problem goes away. Other than that, there's not really much else to say about this game. I mean, one of my keys to the game was actually to get Allen Robinson and Khalil Mack involved, which, man, did the Bears do that. Like, Allen Robinson, he had the best game of his Bears career. He had 100 and something yards and uh, two touchdowns and just dominated and Khalil Mack, as usual, was back to his form, you know, two sacks, got a ton of pressure on the quarterback. He helped the rest of the rest of the defensive line so much as well. And, you know, he just proved why we pay him that much money. Like he's worth every single cent, in my opinion. You know, even though we've been winning in such dominant form and we've been beating so many teams this year, fans are still not giving us respect because they're saying now that, oh, we just beat the Lions, we've beat like such bad teams, we beat the Jets, we beat the Bills. Like, oh, we'll come back when you face, when you actually beat good competition. 
Now, the thing I want to say to these fans is that, first of all, they're not very educated fans. Only a casual fan would say that because you have to look at the margin of victory, the point differential that we have been winning by. Yeah, I agree. It would not be that impressive if we barely beat these bad teams, if we barely won against them, maybe in the last second or something. And I agree that we do have to still beat good competition to get, you know, more respect. But right now, we deserve a level of respect because of how dominant we have been, even against bad teams. I mean, you can only play who's on your schedule. Like, that's not our fault. This is not college football where you can schedule your own, you know, schedule. So, I mean, look at the point differential the Bears have been winning by. We're currently third in the NFL in point differential. Only behind the Kansas City Chiefs and the New Orleans Saints, which are both first place teams. And we, we've been beating opponents by an average of 10.4 points per game. I don't care who you play, that is a sign of a very good football team. We've been losing games by very little. We've been winning games by a lot. And one more thing I finally want to say is that Matt Nagy, in my opinion, he deserves, so far at least, he deserves coach of the year more than any other coach in the NFL. Yeah, Bill Belichick is probably the best coach of all time. Yeah, Sean McVay is doing amazing. Yeah, Sean Payton, you know, he, he has the Saints as a number one seed. But Matt Nagy took a, a struggling team that has not had success in such a long time, that has not made the playoffs since 2010, and he's turned it into this dominant team that looks like it's on course, on track, to make the playoffs. And the reason why this has happened is because of the culture that he's fostered in this team. And culture is extremely important in a sport, in an organization, in any type, of, any type of place where you have to work with other people. I mean, you look at the Bears right now, they're just having so much fun. Like every single player on the team, they're just enjoying every single second of the season. And you can see it in their faces, you can see it in the way that they play. They just love being out there. Like after every interception, after every big play, there's like group celebrations, you know, after the fumble that I forgot who caused it, but I think Prince of Mukamara, you know, they took that team photo together, which there's been like two of those celebrations so far this season. And I've just always wished for a Bears team that was this united, that was this fun to watch. And we finally have it. You know, there's so many teams in the NFL right now that have, that, that have talent, but don't have the culture that's necessary to have success in the NFL. Like you look at the Jaguars right now, they have so much talent, but their culture is very dysfunctional. And you look at like teams like what, the Raiders are very dysfunctional, the Lions, they're having a lot of dysfunction right now. The Bears are having, you know, they're a very united team right now. And this team is gonna go very far if we stay united, if we stay like this the entire season. Enjoy every single second of the season, every single second of each game because this team is damn fun to watch.